we do this in two extremes. We either are so concerned about perfectionism that we don't move at all, or we're so concerned about perfectionism that we just, right, just go for it. And either place, we're not going all in. Welcome, bienvenue, bonjour to the beautiful Soul Ed Life podcast. For women who desire to awaken their heartfelt desires, trust themselves fully, and connect with their soul's purpose through beauty. Oniva, let's go. Bonjour, bonjour, and welcome to the beautiful Soul Ed Life podcast. I am coming to you live from Nice, from the south of France. You can see the reflection. Let's see if I duck. Does that help? No, you can't see the full reflection. If you're, if you're listening on audio, you certainly can't see it. But maybe I will unplug all of my things and turn the camera around so you can see this gorgeous view. If you happen to be watching us on YouTube, there is a little bit of background noise. It's a street below me, but I'm going to run with it. I'm going to run with it. So my intention for this podcast is to talk about perfection. And the idea where we can get stuck in wanting something to be perfect, where we actually get paralyzed. And there's also this other extreme where we don't go all in and we kind of rush something and come from a space of urgency and we do that and we just like do it. We we just do it. But we do it from a space of almost urgency and scarcity and don't allow ourselves to have that all in energy. So I want to talk about these two extremes today. And my intention is that we all leave this podcast feeling into the beautiful space in between of this kind of combination of surrender into the divine unknowing and readiness. Readiness in that we honor the truth when we know we're called forward, even if our minds or our egos don't feel ready, but we know that we know that we know that it's time. So I'm going to tell you a little story. I was in the bathtub. It's not this kind of story. I was in the bathtub and I was reading and journaling, which is something that I often do. I have this beautiful little bamboo um, bathtub holder thing where I have room for my candles and all this. I had everything set up and I was journaling about a training that I was called to do. And I thought, okay, I'm going to do this training on the 23rd and I'll do a one day training and I'll launch our Femme Riche program. So that was my idea. And I was sitting there in the bathtub and I was journaling about the content and what I think thought I wanted to share. And For me, there's no other way to say this, but a divine download. You might resonate with that. You might not resonate with that, but that's what it is for me. A divine download, a a channeling feeling, so to speak, where I know it's not coming from my ego. It's coming from my soul. And I started writing this content that was much deeper than what I had expected. And what I heard inside was, that this training is going to be called the atonement. And I was like, "Mm, yeah, no, that sounds super edgy, super, maybe even controversial. And I'm not really a religious person. And mm, I don't know about this. And I kept journaling and journaling. And I was like, okay, I get where this is going. I actually love this idea. Okay. I'm a yes. And then as I was deeply listening inside this feeling, I want to say this voice, but it's not really a voice, right? We know it's like an inner knowing. It's a nudge. It's a, it's a calling. And so what I received was, and it's going to be three days and it's going to be Easter weekend. And I was like, Oh my, and this was like the week before Easter, right? So I'm like, okay, not really. My ego's not really liking this, (laughs) but all right, let's see what's here. Let's explore this. And then it was, and you're going to launch your book. And I'm like, um, yeah, okay, we're at a hard no right now because I'm not ready. In fact, I have this big, huge plan for the book and I want it to be really special and I'm just not ready. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. So I kept praying about this 
And I feel like, you know, if this is something that you can relate to, this feeling that you don't feel ready, but you know, it's time. Do you know what I mean? Like where the ego inside, like, I'm really not ready. I want this to be perfect. And so for me, just again, the, the personal story behind this is that I've been writing this book for nine years and oh my goodness, if you've ever written a book, it is one of the most cathartic experiences I feel like I've ever had, ever had. It's you really do live everything again. Now, for me, this is not the book that I thought I would write. It was the book that was meant to be written. It's actually a novel. It's filled with magic. It's very extraordinary. In fact, when I was a little girl, I used to always read. I loved reading ever since I was a little girl. And I fell in love with The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. I loved that series so, so much. And so my book took on this magical kind of feeling of multi dimensions and things that just shocked me and the femme types come to life in the book. So it's just like unbelievable, like not something I was expecting at all. And I remember when I was a little girl getting so lost in the characters and so lost in the story that without realizing it, I was transforming. I really believed that anything was possible. And so inside of the context of my book, I really intended to have a similar journey for us as women that I feel like we have gotten so addicted to the personal growth and that, you know, we, we just need to try harder and do a little bit more. And I really feel I'm talking about this a lot on the podcast, you know, that we're coming into the beauty age and that I feel like there's another way to evolve. And that is through grace and through beauty and through a different level of ease, not meaning that things might not ever be challenging or a struggle, but that perhaps they don't always have to be. So inside of that, this book means a lot, like a lot to me. I mean, inside the book, although it's a novel, a magical novel, my story is woven throughout every character. In the book and it's deeply emotional and personal and yet at the same time it's every woman's story to an extent it's all of our stories inside of a deep awakening and remembering of our wholeness so it means a lot and I have been going to agents and you know gotten some responses and when I was in the bathtub, I just heard this deep, deep calling of like, stop waiting. Like literally stop waiting. And I spoke to one of my contacts that's been really supportive. She's really, really well known in the industry. And after I got this inner knowing, it was the next morning that I was meditating. And remember I had said in the bathtub, like, yeah, no, nope, we will not be doing that book launch because I'm waiting. I'm not ready yet. I'm not ready yet. I'm not ready yet. It has to be perfect. It has to be perfect. And the next morning when I was just what got done meditating, this woman who, again, she's really well known in the industry. She's connected with a lot of agents. And she was like, how's it going? I'm like, Linda, I, I'm going to go for it. Like I'm not waiting anymore. Like it's time. And she's like, you're not going to believe this. I literally had a vision yesterday that you went for it on your own and it opened every single door and you were literally like able to call every shot you want. I hear you. It's time. Like freaking go, go. Ah, still didn't feel ready. Right. Still didn't feel ready. And yet when I started to play with this and feel the fun inside of what I wanted to do and detached from the fear, you know, I realized a few things. And I think this is something we can all relate to inside of perfectionism. One, a control factor, right? Like I want it to be perfect. And if I looked at that through the, the lens of this example, this book, it was like, I want it to be, I want to guarantee that it's going to be a bestseller. And in my mind, that's like, well, then it has to be with an agent and a publisher. And I want it to be, you know, well known. I want it to have impact all around the world. And I'm afraid that if I self publish, it's going to look like I'm weak or I can't get a public, like these, all these ego things were coming up. All this fear was coming up. All this attachment to this is why I need to wait. And this is why it needs to be perfect. I'm waiting for some sort of guarantee. 
And when I settled in behind that, there was such a deep inner knowing that it was time to birth this book into the world and that I didn't need to wait for anybody else's permission, that I didn't need to overly attach to the external numbers of how many this or how many that. Now, certainly, like, I would love, and my intention is that the book impacts as many women families, men, like all over the world, because I know in my own experience, my client's experience, like when a woman remembers her wholeness, everything changes. Everything changes for her lineage. Everything changes for her family. Everything changes for her husband. Like when a woman remembers, everything changes, everything. Like that's the power in us, for us as women and all of us, right, have this power. I'm not saying men don't. All of us do. Just since I speak to women and this transformation is about women, I feel we forget the level of impact and power we have as women when we remember our wholeness and our beauty. So I started to consider, okay, like, all right, God, what if we do this? What's this look like? What are we talking about here? I'm not just going to, doesn't feel right to just, put the book out there. Like that doesn't feel good. That doesn't feel fun for me. Like it's been nine years in the making. Like what would be fucking amazing? What would be like, Oh my gosh, let's go. So what came through was this idea of launching the book in a really beautiful way behind the scenes where we do a chapter reveal every week for a number of weeks. So this is what I was playing with, right? through this time after the initial download in the bathtub, I'm like, okay, what does this look like? And I hear this inside like 40 weeks. We'll do a chapter a week for 40 weeks. And I'm like, 40 weeks? What? And then I'm like, wow, that could be incredible. Like literally to live into the book together, a reveal, a reveal, a reveal, like, oh my gosh, this could be incredible, insane. So I start then like counting the days like 40 weeks. And I'm like, oh my goodness. This is going to end right before my 49th birthday. And how many chapters are in the book? 49 chapters. Oh my God. If we do this from May 3rd to February 1st, it's 40 weeks. And then we do nine days. Anyways, this whole download of how I want to do this reveal. So I decided to do it. Ah, I opened up Le Club, which we can talk about later. You can put the link there if you want it. I did it. I opened it up. I surrendered. I'm so freaking excited. I have, you know, allowed myself to participate in this gorgeous unfolding and celebrate it and have fun with it. And this is where I feel like it's really important for all of us to, you know, remember this opportunity that we have to allow the transformation, you know, it's like, this incredible unfolding to let go of perfectionism and at the same time to remember that it's all perfect. So what I brought forward in the beginning is, is something I really want to highlight for, for you, for all of us to understand and to feel into. The one side of us that gets so attached to perfectionism that we're paralyzed, right? And we don't do anything. And on the other extreme, which is really the other side of the coin, really, is that we just rush into something and we don't put the time, the energy, and the effort in because there's a space inside of our ego that's like, well, if I don't go all in, then I can't be really disappointed. Like I used to totally do this. Did you know, like in college, I would never reread my papers. I was told in ninth grade by my English teacher that I was a bad writer, that I wasn't good. I was so embarrassed. He called me out in front of the class. He t Actually, he didn't say it exactly that way. He said that it was basically my writing was mediocre. That was basically like telling me I was a bad writer. Like mediocre to me is like death to my ego for sure. Yeah. So all through 
the rest of high school and college, I never reread a paper. I never edited it. It was like, here's my first draft. If I do well in it, great. I've exceeded expectations because I know I didn't really try. That was kind of my motto for a while. The one paper that I did edit and rewrote got sent to like a national society thing. So again, we do this in two extremes. We either are so concerned about perfectionism that we don't move at all, or we're so concerned about perfectionism that we just, right, just go for it. And either place, we're not going all in. There's an all in energy that lets go of the paralyzation and also doesn't do it from a sense of urgency. And that space in between is this beautiful, authentic alignment that even though we might not feel ready, we feel called and we answer the calling. So I'm going to encourage you to feel that, to play with that, to open up to that idea inside of yourself and to consider if there's something that you've been waiting on because you feel like it has to be perfect or you need to be perfect or you have to try a little harder or you're afraid that it won't be successful and you feel yourself holding yourself back or the place inside that's just ready to just go do something from a sense of urgency but that isn't slowing down enough to say like have I gone all in or am I just do you know what I mean there's a difference there's a difference so play with that, pray with that, let me know how that feels. And if you would like to join me and other women from around the world inside of Loop Club, we start on May 3rd. This is going to be a journey like no other. And let me share with you the craziness of this. Well, actually, I'm not going to share with you. If you're interested, go to the link. We'll have it in the show notes. When you see the investment, you might freak out because I did. It was like, seriously, we're doing this for this. And you know what? We're doing this for this. So if you have any questions about that, let us know. We're here for you. And enjoy the reflection inside of yourself on where you may be attached to perfectionism in a way that you're not doing anything or you're not doing anything. Do you know what I mean? You're like paralyzed or you're just rushing in and aligning with that space inside that even if, even though in your mind, you might not feel ready, you're feeling called. And remember underneath it all, it's always all perfect. I love you. I'll see you next week. I promised you that I would flip the camera around. Let me see if I can do this. I've got lights and lighting and bags and all sorts of things. Let me see if I can do this and flip the camera around for a peek at the south of France. Okay, let me do this. Come with me over here, and then I'll get out of the camera so you can see it. Voila! Voila, voila! Okay, au revoir, au revoir, au revoir. I think you can see the reflection there. That's cool, right? Okay, let me come back and sit over here. All right. Oniva. Thank you so much. Merci, merci for listening to the beautiful Soul Led Life podcast. I would love if this message served you, that you support it and share it with other women who might benefit from really having their lives in balance with their femme types. And if you can leave a comment, do a review, I love reading every single one of them. And I would adore if you could take a snapshot of yourself wherever you listen to this episode and post it on social media. My Instagram is elegantfemme1 and I'd love to see you, share you, and just celebrate with you as you are moving into creating, experiencing, and claiming your own beautiful soul-led life.